Howdy folks, David Gonzalez here. Welcome back. And yep, still tinkering with the submarine. Um, so I got a long day ahead of me uh, servicing my 3D printer. I've got both uh, both nozzles are clogged. So I'm gonna have to like redo the head assembly. And before I got lost in that, I just wanted to share something with you. So there's a couple of techniques that I've been using when building this, uh, specifically when trying to build symmetrically, radially symmetric um, objects like the propeller and stuff. Um, well, specifically, what brought this on is this. Now, this isn't the first time that I've modeled a, um, a motor component using this technique, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because it's not just useful for things like motors, you know, trying to create stator cores and stuff, but it's also useful for when you try to model out things like rims on a car or on a motorcycle. Um, and basically what it does is it makes use of the synergy between the the, it makes use of the synergy between the array modifier and the uh, curve modifier. And I will show you now. Um, let's say goodbye to the sub for now and I'll pull up a new file because it just makes it easier. Uh, we are going to keep the default cube. Uh, first things first though, I want to go into my settings, units, metrics, unit scale, I like to put that at 0.1 uh, simply because this box now is one meter, right? From here to here is a meter. And if you scale in, this is now a centimeter from here to here. And then each one of these little cubes is a millimeter. So let's say we want to create a and I do live in America, but for this I do use millimeters. Um, the reason why is because a lot of the slicing software defaults to millimeters. So I just make things simple for myself, leave it at that. Um, blender also defaults to, the default blender unit is, um, I guess, synonymous with a, or the default blender unit technically is a meter. Um, but I just like working in the metric system because it's all divisible by 10. Um, despite, you know, that I live in America, uh, I'm a paramedic and all our medical stuff is done by kilograms. So division by 10 is just pretty easy. Um, we are going to keep the default cube. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create, uh, first let me show you the creation of a stator core, right? So the stator core, basically is the stack of laminated discs within a motor that creates um, the magnetic field that will spin the rotor within the motor itself. Um, there's a couple of awesome sites that I have a couple of awesome YouTubers that I've been following, uh, Electro Boom and this guy Jeremy. Jeremy is fantastic. This guy just takes apart motors. Like he just goes really in depth in motors. Um, link in the description down there uh, but I've learned a lot from watching his videos so if this ever cross your path Jeremy thank you so much for everything you do um, let's get into this we will hide our friend the default cube for now what I want to do is I want to put in a curve curved circle and we're gonna go down here and where it says add bezier circle we're going to want to change that radius. We don't want the radius to be one meter because this is going to give us a two meter diameter circle. Um, we're not building a motor that big. So let's say we want to make one that's about, okay, we'll go with a stator core that's about 10 centimeters. That means that the radius here is going to be five. Five centimeters. And there we go. 
So now we'll unhide our default cube, select our default cube, clicking on it, tab into it, double tap A to select all, and we're going to scale this in. Now here's the interesting thing. The orientation to this Bezier circle when we put the um, curve modifier is going to be based on the object center. So right now the object center is, or the object origin, is that little dot where the 3D cursor is. If I grab this now and I move all of that below, and now we will go into our modifiers and we're going to add a curve modifier. Eyedropper, we're going to select the Bezier circle. Tab you see that it's aligned to the inside of the circle. Now if we grab that and bring it forward, or rather, well we're viewing this right now from the top view. So if we move it back in the Y, hit tab again, now we're aligned along the outside. So let's grab that, bring it back to here, because we want that Actually, now that I think about it, no, we're good, we're good. Um, we're going with 10 centimeters. That means that we want the thickness of the stator core itself to be, uh, let's say, three centimeters. So if the thickness of the stator core wall is three centimeters, that's going to give us a rotor of about four centimeters. So... Let's actually turn on snapping. Let me. Sorry. There we go. Um, snap increment. By holding down shift, you can move it by a millimeter. And so now I know that this is aligned exactly to. The, um, the x-axis uh, at our modifier mm, array and at our modifier curve. Now the curve will set up here. Now you can do in the array fit curve but in this application what we're looking for is we're looking for a specific number of teeth or a specific number of grooves we're looking for a specific number of like spokes in this um, device because the way that the motor works or the way that the stator core works is by passing wire through the uh, different teeth in the object right so as I build this it should come more clear to you um, and you're going to need the teeth to be evenly spaced. You're going to need the teeth to be, because we're doing this or because I'm setting this up to be something that's 3d printable, we're going to need the spaces and the size to be, um, pretty specific. So whether you're putting this on a 3d printer or you're going to bring it to a CNC machine. So because of that, I find it a much better to get more accurate results if you just use a stack with the array modifier and the curved modifier curved circle to get this shape so for the submarine i went with a single phase and with that single phase what i wound up using is 16 different teeth because it's four teeth times four because you're going to need a positive and a negative and you're also going to need um, for a single phase there's an auxiliary phase an auxiliary power phase that's used to kick the motor into uh, its start rotation so you need eight phases for your primary or you need eight teeth for your primary um, that's four teeth top four teeth bottom and then you need another eight teeth for your secondary, so that's 
four teeth on the left, four teeth on the right. Um, giving us a total of 16. So if we go to our fill type, fix the mount, 16. And now what we're gonna wanna do is shut off relative offset and we wanna go with a constant offset. Now, we are going, or we set this up to be a 10 centimeter diameter um, circle. So if we use Google and you just type 10 centimeter times pi, Ten centimeters pi, we get thirty-one point four one five nine centimeters. So we're going to stick with that. We're going to take that number. It actually gave me a lot more numbers than that, but we're going to just stick with the last four. So that gives us what I just did. There was pi times diameter gives you the circumference. So now that I have the circumference, we're going to need to divide that circumference by 16 increments for each one of the teeth. So back to Google, divide 31, 41, 59 by 16 gives us 1.69349. So we're gonna go 1.635. In here, the constant offset, paste, and that four, we're rounding up to five centimeters. And now we have mathematically perfectly spaced teeth. The only issue is we have to now actually create the geometry that we want spaced. So let's switch this to cursor. The pivot point is set to the 3D cursor. We're going to extend this out. Oh, are we not? We are snapping, okay. Oh, yeah, instead of doing, sorry. Instead of doing um, instead of doing the scale like I was going to do before, because we've got it incremental snapping on, we are just going to use that to make this one, two, three centimeters in depth. Um, now the same thing here, we're going to want to pull this in. And because you have the snapping set of constant, you maintain a perfect distance through all these different iterations. So now if I tab, here you see this thing starting to look more like a stator core. Now, one thing that you do notice is that it's pinching here in the middle. That's just basically the effect of the curve modifier. And I'm actually fine with that. You can just basically account for that by stretching or scaling here. The other thing is you see how it's very like boxy over here. You can fix that by just adding subdivisions. And with the addition of the subdivisions, your shape starts to curve out. You also see that we are back to that three centimeter depth that we were talking about before, one, two, three. So we'll give the spine of our stator, right, the outer shell of the stator, 
we'll make that about one centimeter. So let's extrude that. So here we go. Select that face. We're going to extrude that entire face outward along the X. Um, because we're trying to select everything here together. Actually, let me just do this now so it'll make it easier for us. I'm going to grab this, move this whole thing up, and bring it that plane flush to zero Z. And then, I mean, we still are keeping the default cube, we're just deleting all of that. Um, now, I believe we're going to have, since we selected the bottom, let's flip the normals, shift N, recalculates the normals. And so now we're building something flat, but that's fine because we can just add the thickness modifier or solidify modifier and get back um, what we just deleted. So let's head back to here. And this will just make it easier for us to, this will just make it easier for us to model right now. X, bring that to that point. Same thing here, grab X, bring it in to that point. And now we're going to do the same thing here. Incremental snapping is still on. And the other thing that we're going to want to do is we want to go here, merge, and okay, good. So now all these pieces here are merged with the exception of this little bit right here, which will fix. Um, we will fix that seam at the end. Let's continue working on our shape. So the other thing that we're going to need, we're going to want the, there. We want to create here a kind of like, we want to broaden this face out a bit more because um, when the electricity passes around these plates, it induces a magnetic field in the metal itself. And once that metal mag magnetic field is induced, this starts to become positive, this will become negative respectively, respective to the flow of the electricity in the copper wire. So you're going to want, we want to maximize this surface here while still leaving room to drop in our uh, wire components. So if you're 3D print this, you we're not gonna be putting in like massive coils that you would like coil on a separate machine and then put into here. Um, so this should be fine. We could probably get a little closer. That should be good. That should leave enough room to put a wire through there because that opening is about more than a millimeter. Let's see. Yeah, so that opening is about two millimeters big. That should be enough to put wire through it. But um, just in case, let's actually thin this out just a little bit. And the same thing here. Now, when you 3D print this versus taking this template and using it on a CNC machine to cut out like stacks of metal, the reason why laminated plates are used, let me add the other modifier that I was talking about before, the solidify modifier. And with the solidify modifier, I can set the thickness, let's say, so we're going 10 centimeters wide. 
Um, let's do, do it like five centimeters. So there you go. Now the thickness of the stator core is five centimeters. So if you 3D print this, it will print out layers that'll look like the stack laminations, but that's not how this uh, it's not how this is going to work. The ferroplastic polymer is basically plastic with um, iron mixed into it. And while it will generate, um, while, while you can magnetize it and induce a magnetic field into it, it's not the same as if you were using the stacked laminated discs. The reason for that is the stack, okay. If this was in a real operation, let's say you CNC'd this out of a solid hunk of metal. As you generate an electric field passing the wires through this, um, you wind up creating within the metal itself these eddy currents and the eddy currents that are generated in the metal will heat the metal up to a point where it will either A, lose its ability to magnetize um, because the metal is in such an excited state that you can't get the, you can't get the molecules to line up um, along a positive and negative axis or worse, you'll actually have a complete meltdown of your motor. Um, copper will melt before the metal will. Actually, no. Hold on. Forget what I just said. Um, the copper will induce a current through the core, and if the eddy currents that result from the induction uh, are allowed to pass freely through the core, um, the eddy currents will heat up the the iron, and it will just basically melt your core. You'll melt. You'll 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 suffer a meltdown with the motor. That's why they use for you know things like motors and also transformers, where they're inducing a magnetic, where they're using a magnetic field to induce a current within the metal. Uh, they use stacked laminations, so they're individual discs that are coated with some kind of polymer. That acts as an insulator and so instead of passing a instead of inducing a current inside a solid metal hunk you're inducing that current in individual pieces of metal that will generate their own magnetic fields and then those magnetic fields will work together to create a bigger magnetic field so Here's our stator, and I would leave everything, the modifiers and stuff, as it is. Be yeah, I would leave the modifiers as is. If there was something that you wanted to do more to this, I would work from a duplicate. So let's change the cube to stator. Stator. Or prime and then if we simply shift D to duplicate call this stator core a now we can start applying the modifiers apply the array modifier apply the curve modifier we're not going to apply solid yet and the reason for that actually let's hide solid now let's delete solid. Um, we'll hide prime. Remember that we have a we have an overlap somewhere, or we had an overlap. It looks like there it is. So these two pieces here overlapped. Let's merge them at the center. Merge them at center. And that should be it. Now, 
we can go in and apply the solidify modifier. And again, we went with what, five centimeters? Apply that, and we have a finished stator core. And if you want, you could go in and let's say apply a slight bevel to these pieces, but it's really not necessary. You know, not, not even for aesthetic purposes. Um, but if you were to build this into another device, then you might want to boolean some pieces out of this. So you can slide it or slot it into the device you're building. So there's your stator core. Now let's say you were working on something, uh, let's say like a bicycle or a motorcycle rim. Uh, we're going to go simple with this one. We're just going to go three. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could add the piece that you want for your spoke. Add mesh. Hmm. Work from cube. Um, ignore the sizes that I'm putting in here. They're not real world sizes. I'm just don't want to complicate things right now. Uh, what you could do is take this piece and in your object mode do an Alt D so you make an instance of it and then what you're going to do is you're going to want to rotate it by the uh, center or rotated by the 3D uh, 3D cursor. Uh, Z is the axis that's looking at us, so we're going to rotate it by the Z. We're going to rotate it by the Z 120 degrees because we're going with, remember, three spokes on a wheel, and those three spokes on the wheel are operating around, you know, 360 degrees. 360 degrees divided by three is your 120. And same thing here, shift, I mean, alt D, duplicate instance, R, Z, 120 minus. So now, whatever alterations I do here to this piece, I will start doing to the others. So that's one way to go about it, but let's say you want to build something to a certain specification. I want to build a rim, and I want to build a rim so that the outside measurement is 500, centi 500 millimeters in diameter, so 50 centimeters in diameter, right? Okay. We're going to make sure we are in object mode, shift add a circle. And we'll go with oh, shift add curve circle, and it's 50 centimeters. So the same thing applies. I'm going to add a cube. Tab in. So if the inner hub, um, I actually don't have a, an exact measurement for an inner hub, but let's play with, uh, let's say we made the inner hub 10 centimeters. So that means that we're gonna want a 
this spoke here to go to about five centimeters. So we're gonna count from here, one, two, three, four, five. We wanna end up somewhere around there. Okay, so same thing again. Go to array, we're working with three this time. And we're gonna shut off relative, we're gonna to go to constant. And let's see, we've got trusty Google again. 50 centimeters times pi is 100, 157 centimeters, 0 0.0796. All right, we'll do that. 157.0796. Type that in, and we're gonna divide that by three spokes. So now we are left with 52, 35, 98, 66. So we'll go with 52, 35, 97. Go into X, paste, 98, actually 99 centimeters. Go to our modifier again, add curve modifier. We're going to select that. And something screwy. Why did it do that? Centimeters. Oh because I did this wrong. Yes, I did. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did the math wrong, or rather I inputted the wrong, I inputted the radius, the size that I wanted the diameter. No problem. So with this, what we can do is we can just scale this 0.5 and there is our three spokes so now when we go into here grab that bring that in and there's our three spokes um, our external diameter is correct and our internal diameter for the internal spoke, one, two, three, four, five, ten centimeter internal with uh, looks like 50 centimeter, one, two, three, four. Uh, another half there. Yes. So there's our 50 centimeter spoke with 10 centimeter hub. So from here, it is a matter of building up your geometry as you would any other way. Um, so let's say we'll make the let's say we'll make the thickness of the rim uh, three centimeters might be too small. Go with five centimeters. Yeah, we'll go with five centimeters for the center of the rim. One, two, three, four, five. Take that, extrude out on the X. did a bit of a boo-boo here. Let's see. Hmm. We'll go with face select. We're going to select that face and that face. Up top, or seven to go to the top view. Hit extrude. Now hit scale X. And 
now we can keep the grid snapping on. Uh, let's go over here, options, tools, options, symmetry. So now if we grab this guy, that face right there, the other face is deselected, and we start dragging it along the X, the other one's going to scale in symmetry, and they will meet, oops, meet together here. Let's turn merge on, merge distance is fine. Grab again, X, hold down shift to get increment, to get a smaller increment, and that should do it. So not looking very spoke-like, no problem. Just add subdivisions. Let's add even amount of subdivisions though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subdivisions here. So we're gonna add eight subdivisions here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tab, boom. So now, any changes that we do here, will be reflected in the rest of the model. Mm, that's not what I want to do. See, I want to select this. The circle select tool, just to get this stuff. Now I'm going to inset that, extruding it, E, Y, oh, I still have snapping on. Let's turn on the 3D. It should still be extruded. Oh, gotta shut off the polish mirror. There we go. Grab Y, bring that in. Good. So, See that it's starting to look more rim like. Um, this these are a couple of faces that we're gonna need to delete. Um, delete faces should be fine. Again, delete face. Let's do the same thing here on this side. And delete those faces as well. You see how it continues. Um, we're probably going to also have to delete these faces because it's supposed to be a closed object so we're not going to need those faces there and let's hide that for now so we can just see okay that's good turn that back on so now the inner hub, we're going to do similar. Let's select these faces here, these faces here. Uh, shut off incremental snapping, E to extrude, escape, scale X, make sure your mirror is off. Okay, turn incremental snapping on, turn mirror back on. I apologize for the background noise, I got the windows open. The irony, I opened up the windows so you wouldn't have to hear the air conditioner. And 
now we're subject to the noise from the street. Apologize for that. Um, grab X, bring that in incrementally until it makes contact. And now, again, eight up there. So we'll go with eight down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, let's say you changed your mind. You don't want three spokes, you want five. Okay, so you want five spokes. Remember what our math was, right? So the circumference of this 500 centimeter rim was 157.0796. We divided that by three to get the 52.35.99. If we then turn around and divide that by five, we're gonna get 31, 41, 59. Or let's just make it simpler, 31, 41, six. If we go into here and type that number in, which I just forgot, 31, 41, six. Sorry about that, 31 dot 41, six centimeters. Okay, you see that it's shrunk, and now if we just add our five, there we go. But now we're going to have to do some changes, right? Because now what you're going to wind up with is a bunch of weird overlapping geometry that's just going to make a mess of things, and that you don't want that. So we go back to our original, and let's go with edge selection, select that edge. Oh, it doesn't make an edge. Oh, okay, it does make an edge. I was surprised. Oh, for whatever reason, that's not making an edge. Could it be because? Yes. The reason why that's not being recognized as an edge ring is because we got faces here. So we'll go to face select up here, and we'll delete these faces, only the faces. We'll do the same thing on this side. Delete faces only faces and go back turn on the view go back to edge select we're going to select that edge loop and that edge loop our x mirror is still on and we are going to definitely want to turn that on uh, yes turn on proportional editing mode because we're going to have to grab these and drag them back quite a bit. And so I want it to the point where the last increment before it starts deforming that center pillar. And that should be it. And I'll grab shift. No, nope, don't want it. Don't want these this moves affecting that center pillar. There. And now we've gone with five spokes. So that's why it's a good idea to actually keep the go uh, rim prime. That's why it's a good idea to keep the um, keep the shape that has all the modifiers still on it, and then just make a duplicate of it, and then do whatever other final tweaks and embellishments you want on that final piece. Um, but now we're in a situation where we can just pretty much work on our design at our leisure. So I want to give it a bevel. You know, I want to bevel these edges a bit. Actually, no, it might be a little too early for beveling the edges. So let's say I wanted to do something like, um, 
uh, I don't know. I want to inset this spoke, right? Because we built out the rim, but the spoke is still the same. So let's do delete faces. I want to delete more than that. I don't want to delete vertices. Uh, probably gonna have to select these two then. Select that. Delete faces. And now you deleted a lot more than what I wanted you to delete. Oh, no, I didn't select everything I wanted to select. Delete faces. There we go. And for this now, um, unselect that and unselect that. Uh, yes, bridge edge loops. Fill that. Fill that. Select this again. You know, Alt, right click, will select the edge loop. We'll deselect that. Bridge loops. Fill. And then when we go to our object view, we see how it affected the object. Now, if we go in and I want to give a bevel to here, bevel this, I'm not using the bevel modifier because I don't want to apply a universal bevel to everything. I just want to apply a bevel right here. here. I'm not too concerned about in there. I'm not too concerned about this yet. So control B adds another bevel. go more crazy shall we um, let's actually make this a little more hefty I'm going to select all that scale it in the X we still have proportional editing on that's fine and let's do something Here, 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 and here. Delete faces. Go to edge select. Bridge edge loops. And we'll add another bubble there. That's how you can create a rim for motorcycle, car, whatever, using the same idea, same concept. So really this, um, the synergy between these two modifiers, the array modifier and the curve modifier to basically create these radially symmetric objects that might not have um, an even number symmetry like two, four, six, and eight, where you're dealing with threes, fives, 
sevens and nines. Um, I think this is a pretty good uh, set of tools for doing that. Um, you know, from creating either spoke to tires or creating stator cores for motors. Um, and once I get my 3D printer uh, up and running again, I can show you these objects printed. Um, it's pretty cool, you know, and like I, there are other soft uh, software out there for doing like mechanical stuff for uh, 3D printing. Blender works pretty good as also, you know, um, there are ways of getting precise um, measurements with your, uh, there are ways of getting precise measurements with your 3D models, so you can build your 3D models to scale, and yeah, let me see how long I've been, so we're going on 52 minutes, almost an hour, um, you know what, if you stick around, because I don't think it would be, I don't believe it would be worthwhile to stop this and create another video so let me continue here and show you something else uh, state of core actually no I'll show you on the summary um, Is it a recent summary? Uh, no, I actually don't want to save that. I don't need it. Okay, so now that you saw that, um, this propeller I actually did the old way. I um, modeled out the propeller blade and then I just copied it and you know rotated it 120 degrees. Uh, but for our friend over here that would not be I'm going to do hide shift hide everything else there we go for our friend over here that would not have been the best way of going about it because you'd have to copy these 16 teeth over and over and over again and that's not mm, this is just a lot simpler it's a lot simpler to model it out this way this way you'll get your radial symmetry with the teeth that you need but what i wanted to show you was actually was this uh, i wanted to show you the oh let me change the uh surface on that because it's a little too shiny uh increase the roughness there you go uh i wanted to show you the wires um pretty straightforward how i actually made it it's if you look it's basically curves with a bezier circle in the bevel um but i wanted to show you the wiring so you can see how this thing gets wired what you wind up doing is you wind up inducing uh current basically a positive current will be generated here and here and it's got to be wired so that you wind up with the inside here being positive and the outside here being negative and as you oscillate that with um, alternating current it's going to shift from positive to negative positive to negative positive to negative within this field so the inside will be positive the outside will be negative and the outside will be positive the inside will be negative and this will cause a rotor to start turning and the way the rotor turns in this kind of induction motor is you basically have a series of copper bars radially symmetric odd number all right again so this is another reason why i use that trick um so you can get like you know some this is actually what 16 teeth so you can get 17 teeth or 17 copper bars radially aligned around another um, core of laminated 
uh, steel discs. And as the current passes through here, you'll put a positive charge on the inside, which will induce a negative charge in the... What does it induce a positive charge? It'll induce a positive... The reason why it works is because the copper, once you force an oscillating, once you force a moving magnetic field onto the copper, the copper is going to resist that field and will adjust its own magnetic field to counter the, um, the current that's being induced. So. I'm not 100% sure on this, but whatever the charge is here inside the core, the copper, um, the copper cage is going to respond to that in such a way that's going to want to repel that. So in a three-phase induction motor, you wind up with a third um, phase of wiring that will create a rotating magnetic current or mag rotating magnetic field by going positive 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 you know so it'll shift that with like a positive charge here but then over here like 120 degrees offset will be a negative charge that's being induced and this will cause the squirrel cage rotor to start to turn as that field starts to spin within the rotor it's within the stator core itself with this thing the single phase this red wire is basically represents what's called an auxiliary winding and by using a capacitor the natural resistance oh and this wire also has to be thinner than this wire so I should have actually done something let me about 299. Um, where is you? Convert to mesh tab. L. L. Alt S. L. Oops, sorry. L. L. There we go. So the auxiliary winding being smaller um, will have a higher resistance. And like, I believe the way that it works is the capacitor will basically build up a stronger charge than what the blue wiring will get. And the resistance of the the higher resistance of the um, the red the red copper wire, the secondary winding, um, will cause it to be like ninety degrees out of phase with the main cop with the main blue winding, and then the squirrel cage broder itself is actually a series of well, let's do this. Um, one, two, three, four, okay, six. Uh, go curve, circle, three centimeters. And now let's add a cylinder. mesh cylinder um, five millimeter five millimeter oh on the spot uh, we'll go 12 radius two 
2.5 millimeter and like five centimeter. There we go. So let's hide everything else for now. And I'll show you how the squirrel cage looks. Same thing. Click him, add modifier, array. Um, go with 17 or 15 actually. I'm actually concerned about how many I can fit this size. Uh, math time, six. Six centimeters time pi is 18.8495. So we'll go with eight, 18, 18, 18, 18.8496 divided by 15. will give us 1.25664 centimeters. And now array, no, sorry, uh, curve. Where are you? Gold line. Curve modifier, thank you. And so here's our squirrel cage. But, but, the, well, I'm just gonna apply all this. The trick here with our squirrel cage, or hamster wheel, is these bars have to be slightly askew. So here's what I believe is happening. As the current is being induced, right? Or as the magnetic field fluctuates, it's fluctuating, oh geez, let me do this then, hold on, one, select that, select that, we're going to hide everything else, and now this one, I'm going to set that view, let me set its view to, There we go. Okay, so now you got the wireframe view for the stator core. So you can see the teeth are still there. You can still see the teeth. So now we have our winding set up. What I believe happens is as this current starts to oscillate, it's oscillating in. Um, As the current starts to oscillate in here, it's oscillating in this direction. Like that's actually supposed to be a straight line, apologies. But now, as the squirrel cage start to get its current induced its current is being induced at a bit of an angle um, let's actually change these colors so that they don't mix with the there we go so the stator core 
is producing its field this way where the rotor is producing its field this way and I believe that is that little degree of offset is what gets the rotor to start turning because it's got that bit of skew um, actually not sure on that like I am learning a lot trying to put this together I believe that's how it functions the magnetic field of the stator represented by the purple um, is turning at an angle or rather the because of the skew of the uh, the bars in the squirrel cage the electromagnetic field produced by the squirrel cage is at a slight angle to the electric field that's being produced by the uh, stator core now this I will say because I can use that for the actual finished product um, so yeah uh, thanks for spending this hour with me um, hope you learned something from this um, I am working on another thing like another project but like okay I am trying to create a project where I go by and it's not going to be this character but where are you Um, I've got this character that I've been working on for a 3D printed model. Uh, you've seen this already before, but what I want to do is I actually want to go start to finish. I didn't do it with this character, but with another character, I want to do a start to finish uh, tutorial on modeling and rigging and animation, but I don't want to while it's going to be released in pieces i don't want to start releasing pieces before the entire model is finished uh, i basically want to present you guys with a model i basically want to present the i want to present the entire uh, series in one shot so that it's not like because i remember i was doing i was working on a modeling tutorial where I was using the Yang Shao Long character and um, things happened where I couldn't finish that series and I never got to finish the model. Um, my modeling has substantially improved since then. Um, so rather than finish that, I just basically, and since there's that series started with 2.7, um, since I've gotten a lot better at modeling, uh, I want to basically, let's see, yeah, I think this one was it, no this one. Yeah, you can see my modeling got, has gotten substantially better from this old model. Um, so I want to redo this entire series, but I don't want to um, put it out piecemeal as I work on it. I want to finish everything, have the entire series finished, look through the series, test it out with some friends. You know, get some feedback on it till I get a final product and then present it all to you guys so that you get an entire uh, modeling tutorial and rigging tutorial and animation tutorial uh, all in one shot for you to consume at your leisure without having to wait for me to uh, post another update you know so I'm not leaving you guys planted halfway in the middle like I did with this and apologies for that um, Let's see.
I'll pop it down. You know, because then there's other stuff that I was doing that I still haven't finished, like this alternate version of Yang. Still doesn't have hair. So, you know, that's something that I'm going to have to work on as well. Um, so, yeah. I want to present to you guys something that's finished, workable, that you can download and play with and learn from. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are bearing with me, thank you. Um, I do try to stay active and answer comments and questions as they appear in the videos, but that's basically what I'm going to be working on. Um, so before I get lost in everything else that I'm doing, I just want to give you guys that update. Uh, actually, let's see. Yeah, uh, spoilers. It's actually the Kyoko character. I got this far into it, and um, I'm actually probably going to like redo the base mesh completely. I didn't start doing any details. I just want to do a base mesh, but the numbers that I was playing with were a little odd and awkward. So, again, another reason why I'm going to like completely redo everything and start from scratch. So, keep an eye out for that. We will be creating this character start to finish. The other reason why I'm using this character is because, thanks to the game, there's a lot of animation re references out there that we can use. So, stick around and I will show you how it is that I come up with, uh, let's see. But... Yeah, so I will show you how it is that I create and model characters like this and then rig the characters for animation Her eyes are following her eyes are following a target, but where are the where's the eye target? What are you looking at little one? Or did I not put that in yet? No, I know I did. Huh. I am lost right now because she's looking at something. I just don't see what it is that she's looking at unless I actually put that something out somewhere else. Yeah, here they are. Oh, yes, these are curves. Darn it. I was in the middle of fixing that also. Sorry. Okay, so bear with me and, oh, her tongue's not even attached. Bear with me and I will show you guys start to finish how it is that I get from the default cube to a character like this. All right, um, thank you and stay tuned.